Hello again. In this lecture, we're going to take a look at mating systems, part two. So let's move on. We focused on monogamy or social monogamy, and now we're going to move into, um, if I'm at the right spot, here we go. Oh no, this is not my, this is what I want. Sorry guys. Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, another type of mating system that's evolved, and this is polygyny. Polygyny is one type of polygamy or polygamous mating system. Polygyny, 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 means many females. And so the definition is when one male mates with more than one female during a breeding season. One male, multiple females. The polygyny can be simultaneous or sequential but it occurs during a single breeding season. There has to be, you know, more, multiple females during a single breeding season. Okay, so here are a couple of questions that you can think about. In which group do you expect to see larger variation in the reproductive success of males? Males from monogamous or polygynous mating systems? Hmm. More variance. That means, like, some males will do really well, some males do really badly. In a monogamous situation, chances are, if the sex ratio is pretty close to one to one, most males will get to mate. They may not be super successful in terms of raising their offspring. Um, in a polygynous mating system, one male mates with many females. Think of like elk with a harem of females. So in this situation, wow, one male could get a lot of the matings and some males might get none. Many males might get none of the matings. So there's gonna be a big variation in polygynous mating systems. At least that's what I would expect. Do you expect male-male competition to increase in intensity in polygynous species relative to monogamous ones? Why would male-male would competition be stronger in a polygynous situation? Yeah, the, the pressures on these males, um, they, Males that have the harem need to be able to defend it from males that don't have any access to females. And so we would expect, I think, more male-male competition, more weaponry, more threats, more displays, elaborate kinds of displays, and, and, and more fights between males in polygynous species relative to monogamous ones. We might even expect to see uh, males and females showing greater sexual dimorphism in a polygynous species because of this male-male competition. Males growing larger over time, obviously, but being large, um, able to fight, those kinds of characteristics, able to defend their, their so-called harem of females. Um, so that's probably what we'd expect too. Okay, let's give you some examples of uh, <coughs> Polygyny. One um, type of polygyny could be called female defense polygyny. And so here, a male will find a cluster of females that they can defend. Um, maybe uh, they're, they're defending a territory and the females are in them. Okay? This is true of, say, elk. Males defend a, a cluster of females that are all kind of clustered together, right? And so you get polygyny that way. Uh, the Australian wasp has a female defense polygyny as well. What happens here is the wasp, um, a female wasp will lay her eggs in one area, and as these eggs mature and develop, the um, male, a, an adult male, will find this cluster of female eggs, and he will guard it, essentially, to, until the females hatch. And when the females hatch, they typically mate right after becoming adults right after hatching to adulthood and they mate only once and the females are all close together so a male can basically wait it, wait it out and defend a little territory where these females are developing so this becomes a female defense polygyny another type of polygyny is found in lacking species maybe you haven't heard that word lack before uh, peacocks form what are called lacks and I want to um, 
show this nice pictures here of these peacocks. Uh, you've maybe seen peacocks at zoos, for example. Um, they're beautiful, right? And what happens with peacocks is they form males set up and defend small arenas. Uh, we call them leks, L-E-K-S, and they're called mating arenas. They're just little areas where mating takes place. There's no resources on them. Females don't benefit that way. Um, but a female will then come to a lek and choose a male to mate with. And typically a lek will have many males on it. You know, it'll maybe have four, five, six, seven, eight males all in the same area with no resources. And a female essentially moves on up and looks at them all and chooses who to mate with. This definitely benefits the females because she can, um, she has access to a lot of males and access to select one of many males. So she can select males based on, say, good genes, good quality male. Or maybe because of runaway selection, she is selecting the male that is going to produce or going to allow her to produce a sexy son, right? The males, how could they benefit from such a, a strange system? Um, <laughs> well, the male, one of the males typically gets most of the matings. So we see in, in peacocks that um, one of the males typically gets over 80% of the matings. But, but even if you're not the male that gets, you know, very many matings, you could benefit because females have been drawn into the lack and you might get a mating, right? You could benefit because often you form a lack with relatives, <laughs> with uh, close relatives, your brothers, your, 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 yeah, your brothers or your cousins, etc. And if you attract, if, if the lack attracts a female to mate with any of you, you're gaining in indirect fitness benefits. That's the idea, at least. Okay, polyandry is another type of polygamy. And in polyandry, a female mates with more than one male per breeding season, or per, yeah, per breeding season of one female, multiple males. This is a little more unusual in the animal kingdom, but it's out there. So you social insects often fall into this category. Uh, in you social insects, a single queen typically mates with many worker males, many males. Why does the queen mate with more than one male? There's a lot of reasons. Sperm replenishment, material benefits, maybe the male will provide her with nutrients or protection, maybe um, genetic benefits, so increasing genetic variation in her offspring, convenience. Okay, um, males benefit in this situation. In in you social insects, males are probably just lucky to mate. Um, this is a this is an unusual setup, that's for sure. Um, a probably a more interesting setup in some ways. Um, for polyandry would be in some birds. And I wanted to give you this example, and I'd love for you to watch this video as well. I just didn't put it out as a, as a um, something you need to watch, but it's really interesting. Jacanas are a Central American bird that has um, polyandry, um, a very unique setup. They live in places where there are lots of crocodiles. And um, in order to produce enough offspring to survive the crocodiles, um, researchers believe that these jacanas developed a system that enabled them to have offspring survive, and it's a system that's worked. And what happens in this system is a female basically lays eggs. She lays, she puts all of her reproductive and egg laying, and males put effort into caring for the young. So the males will care for the eggs, will incubate the eggs, will um, uh, feed the young when they're little, will, will protect them from say, from, say, crocodiles in the area. And female then will have a harem of males in order to do this, in, in order um, to have enough protection for the young. You need to have more than one male. And so Female will only lay eggs and lay lots and lots of eggs. Males will do all of the care, so to speak, but we need a lot of males. We can't just have one male to do the care. At least that's what researchers believe. And so what happened in this bird species is almost a, a total role reversal of males and females. So females are, um, are larger, 
than males. They are more colorful than males. They compete with other females for access to males. Um, they defend this harem of uh, males. And in fact, if they find, if a female finds a nest of young that aren't her own, she will kill them. She will practice infanticide. What that essentially does is that frees up males from that area to come mate with her. Okay? So this is a, a, a true whole reversal, if you will, for males and females. Polyandry works well in this bird species because it's a way that the animals have, it's, it's a mechanism that have, has allowed for most reproductive success. Yeah. What about humans? Do we ever see any polyandrous um, societies in humans? Yes. Yes, we do. I'm looking for my notes here. <laughs> They're disappearing on me. Um, uh, fraternal polyandry is practiced in parts of Nepal, Tibet, and northern India in the Himalayan mountains. And in this situation, one female typically marries brothers, two or three brothers. And um, there's a video on this that you can watch. I want you to watch it. It's really interesting. But the researchers believe that this situation happens because it's the best situation. It's the best setup for the culture. And in this particular area, because they're living in the Himalayas, there's very little land. And land is passed down from family, you know, from parents to sons. But um, what fraternal polyandry does is keep the land in the same family. It keeps the land with all of the sons, so to speak. It doesn't separate out or break out, divide the land at all. So that small amount of land stays with the family, if you will. And likely um, the rate of reproductive success is lower in, uh, in eh, I don't know. It's an interesting setup. Take a look at it. Oh, also, when you're reading Mother Nature, the Canela culture and others in South America practice um, polyandry. And these tend to be very mother-centered cultures. So a very different setup of society there relative to uh, relative to, to, to most human societies. So um, there you have it. And then there are promiscuous mating systems. This is uh, populations in which polyandry and poly polygyny occur at the same time. So polyandry can be happening, polygyny can be happening, and this is happening all at the same time in the same population. Okay. So there are different types of promiscuous mating systems. So uh, one type is when there are no pair bonds at all. So female stickleback will yoke up a clutch of eggs, will find a male and mate with her, him. And then she'll yoke up another clutch of eggs and find another male and mate with him. And she'll yoke up maybe a third clutch of eggs in the same breeding season and find another male. Meanwhile, the males are attracting females to mate with them. And they may attract one or two or three females to mate with um, them and then protect that whole clutch of eggs from maybe three different ma females. And then maybe after raising that clutch of eggs, they'll go and do it again with uh, two or three more females. That would be an example of a, a no pair bond formation. What's probably more interesting even is something called, and I don't even know how to say this, polygynandry or polygynandry. Um, <laughs> say it the way you want to. Polygynandry, so it's got kind of both parts in it. Several males forming pair bonds with several females simultaneously. <laughs> Let's look at a picture. This is the best way to see it. There, uh, this is a picture of dunnocks. We've seen dunnocks one other time when males were scrubbing sperm or pecking, picking sperm out of uh, the cloacas of females in that video. And um, here's what we've got. Uh, in dunnocks, they are highly variable in their mating systems. But researchers have found that females that participate in polygynandrous situations usually do about as well as females that participate in a monogamous situation. So in the picture, the green here represents a female's territory. So here we've got two females. Down here we've got two females, three females down here. Uh, the red line represents a male's territory or two males' territories. Okay? So you can see monogamy, one female, one male. Polygyny, two females, one male. Okay, polyandry, 
one female, two males. Polygynandry down here. Multiple females, multiple males. So these males are helping at both of the female's nests. So we've got, and so we've got one female participating with several males, but then each male participating with several females at the same time. Pretty interesting setup, but that works for the Dunnix. It seems to be equally successful as some of the other mating systems that have evolved as well in this really dynamic um, set of mating systems. All right, we'll talk about the evolution of polygyny in the next lecture.